Sometimes that wasn't that bad, actually. <laughs> Yes, hello. Like I said, I'm Dan Richardson. And uh, I'm going to review Knives Out. This is my thoughts on Knives Out. And uh, yeah, like it wasn't completely horrible. Um, I expected worse. Um, that's my review. <clears throat> Keys. That's basically my review of uh, Knives Out. Wasn't horrible. I expected worse. I actually laughed four times, and also spoilers. And, um, possible swearing warning. But, uh, I laughed four times, and I'm going to be talking about those four times, okay? Um, I laughed the first time. Like, almost an hour into the movie. Uh, it was like literally like, uh, like 59 minutes. You know, so literally close to an hour. Uh, and I laughed at uh, when the dog brought um, over the little piece of wood, uh, you know, the piece of the house that uh, Marta, <clears throat> you know, uh, accidentally broke off when she was climbing up the Side of the house, off the bat. <coughs> and uh, then I subsequently laughed when the dog brought it back, because that's completely what a dog would do. And then I laughed at the, uh, and then I laughed at the whole donut thing where, um, where um, Blanc was all like, was all like, you know, this isn't a, this case isn't a perfect circle. And I was like, it's a donut. And then he, then he actually said, a donut. And I laughed at that. And uh, that, I think that was actually the fourth thing that I laughed at. So I don't remember what that third thing is, but just know, I actually laughed at four things in this movie. Now, this movie is about um, Christopher Plummer uh, kills himself or he doesn't actually kill himself, but like, it's this, he, but he does kill himself and um, everybody, and you know, the family's grieving and stuff and it's a whole mess of family drama. Um, Anya de Armist plays uh, Marta and uh, she's like the, his nurse and all that kind of stuff and uh, <clears throat> The family is just full of a bunch of horrible white people and uh, you know as far as this movie is concerned they basically kind of get what they deserve. Uh, let's be honest that's what this that's what this movie is about. It's about horrible white witch or white rich people getting what they deserve. And, uh, you know, are we allowed to disagree with that? Are we? But yeah, that's what this movie is about. And, uh, um, Mr. Blanc is played by, uh, uh, Daniel Craig. And he does a pretty good job as Daniel Craig, uh, he is absolutely a scene stealer. In this movie, it's a little stupid, campy, and ridiculous. And I think the reason that it's popular, not to overanalyze, not to be a pretentious critic who uh, doesn't like a movie and tries to, and just tells you why you think, why he thinks you like it. But I actually think legitimately that uh, the reason that this movie is um, as popular as it is, is because, or as it was, I don't know. Um, it's 2020. Who knows anymore?
Uh, but the world's going to an end. We're <clears throat> the apocalypse has started. We're going. The world's gone to hell. Uh, but basically, I think part of the reason why is because it is a little silly and it's a little campy, and it it, it makes perfect sense that this was uh done, or that this was uh, sort of um. Promoted as a comedy. Now, one moment. So this movie is a whodunit that um, basically is like a lot of the whodunits. Um, people have been making comparisons to this magnificent movie that was based off of a magnificent book. If you can't tell what that is because of the damn cover. Uh, it's Murder on Orient Express. This is a marvelous movie. Uh, filmed on film, and it actually looks quite good, despite the fact that it was filmed on film, because, you know, it's hit or miss when it comes to all movies. It's hit or miss. And it's also very reminiscent of Clue, and a lot of people have pointed out all of its great connections to all sorts of great movies, but that does not make it a great movie. It sort of is like, well, what makes you special? And um, also Columbo is not a good TV show. And I know Spielberg directed like an episode of Columbo. And, um, but that episode doesn't really feel Spielbergian. It has none of the Spielbergisms that you would expect from a Spielberg movie. So like, it's not really that special. <clears throat> is it now? Because Murder, She Wrote, uh, Columbo, a lot of those old mystery shows, or not a lot of them, just specifically Columbo and Murder, She Wrote, are not that good. But this movie is okay. I, like I said, I laughed four times. Daniel Craig, unsurprisingly, is a scene stealer. And, uh... I felt like I had three things. Oh, also, this movie looks absolutely gorgeous. That scene, uh, visually wise, that scene where um, Chris Evans goes, uh, Ransom goes to steal, or grabs the knife and tries to kill Marta, you know? And she's like, oh, and it's slow mo. That's the only scene that looks like The Last Jedi looks kind of ugly. Because The Last Jedi is not, an, is not a good-looking movie. It's, it's quite ugly. And, uh... Except uh, the lasers kind of look nice. You know, because they're actually a good bit of well-used color. But yeah, um... The movie is, uh... Surprisingly... Very nice-looking. And, uh, I'll credit the, uh the uh, director of photography, the cinematographer in the description once again, like I did with The Last Jedi. But th it, this actually was done quite well. And uh, th those are my three things. Um, if you enjoyed this movie, I'm happy for you. I really am. Um, I went into this movie sort of not expecting to like it like it I know why why review a movie if you go in expecting not to enjoy it um well one I didn't have to pay for this movie it's available on Amazon Prime if you have Amazon Prime go watch it um I'm sure Lionsgate or whoever probably gets some sort of revenue based off of clicks but you don't actually have to pay for it if you have Prime, so there you go. Go, go, go watch it. Um, it feels kind of like just one part of a, like it feels like an episode of Columbo. It feels like one part of a TV show about, about Blanc going around places and doing things because shows back then, The Incredible Hulk even does this, where it at some point kind of feels like it's not really about the it's not about 
the main character. It's not really about Columbo because a lot of scenes are the beginnings of episodes don't start with you with our main character. Like the the Spielberg episode of Columbo does not start with Columbo. It starts off with the murder victim getting murdered and all that stuff, and then Columbo shows up. And uh, there are episodes of like Matlock that start with start like that, and um, you know there's a lot of episodes of old detective shows from that era, that you know seventies, eighties era that just do that. And um, depending on how well they do that, they're either good or they're bad. Like comparing Matlock to Columbo. Columbo being not a good show. Also, Columbo episodes are really long. Like, they're like 90 minutes or something like that. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, if your sh- if your TV show, if your weekly TV show has episodes that routine that routinely go over the ninety minute mark, or go ridiculously close to the ninety minute mark, there's something wrong with your show. And yeah, that's basically my review. If you like this movie, good for you. If you didn't like this movie, also good for you. Like this. Like, this movie really could go either way. Um, I feel like I also... I, I feel like I reviewed something like that. Oh. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Except this... Except Scott Pilgrim vs. the World is a much better movie than this. Um, this is not as bad as Last Jedi. Which um, will surprise all of you. But yeah... Um, and, uh, if it's not obvious, I'm kind of going at this movie with a, uh, anti-Last Jedi sort of vibe. Uh, if that was not obvious, how long have I been doing that? Okay. If that wasn't obvious at first. But, this, uh, movie, most certainly, is okay. It might be a, yeah, it's it's a it's a one, out of. It's a one out of uh four, it's a it's a one out of four. Uh, but hey, it earns that one for, actually making me laugh four times. For having some good casting in it, mainly, you know, Dylan Craig, and actually looking pretty nice. It's pleasing to my eyes, unlike the last day. And uh, it's an okay, it's okay cast-wise. Like Anya de Armas is from, uh, you know, uh, she's from uh, Blade Runner 2049 and that movie Knock Knock with uh, Keanu Reeves and some other things uh, that I don't really, I can't really think of. Oh, she was supposed to be in... Uh, wasn't, isn't she supposed to be in uh, No Time to Die? I feel like that's something. But yeah, you know, it's it's okay. It's okay. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis. This is one of the first, like, really big things she's been in in a while. Like, sure, she was in the Halloween movie from 2018. But, like, that was probably the first time I ever saw or ever heard of her being in anything recently. Because, you know, she's... Sure, she's like an award-winning actress or whatever, but she, I don't really think she's been in the spotlight recently. And uh, you have the guy from Man of Steel who plays Zod. He was okay. Like, everybody, generally speaking, was okay in this movie. Because... I don't know, like, uh, this movie is exa- insanely campy, like I said. And, uh, granted, there is a pretty nice division on this film, too, right? Like, granted, I, I do think that a lot of critics were really positive on this movie because of, uh, some political things, and, uh, 
the political messaging is okay. It's not as bad as I expected. Um, an older gentleman giving all of his uh, inheritance to his uh, caretaker or her caretaker is not that insane of an idea. That actually does happen because sometimes your children, as you get older, can be ungrateful shits. And uh, when they throw you off onto a caretaker, and the caretaker is the only nice person to you, then you're going to like that caretaker a hell of a lot more than your own family, than your own kids. And uh, especially when your kids are pieces of shit. And uh, this is exactly one of those cases of of, uh, of Harmon of Harmon Amber Crombie's children being pieces of shit. And uh, I mean, Meg is okay. I think I think she overreacted to um, that one police officer calling Mar Marta. The help, I really feel like she overreacted. Also, her smoking or vaping or whatever she did, or whatever she did, and then turning behind herself to uh, to blow the smoke, you know, to blow the smoke. I think that's really that's not realistic at all. No one, um, most of the smokers I know don't care where the smoke goes. Uh, that might just be a me thing. That probably absolutely is a me thing, but uh, I do feel the need to talk about that. Of like, most smokers don't care. Like, all this bloke, like, you know, you, you, you know, they're not going to bend over backwards. They're just going to, you know, you know, if that or something like that, you know, they're not going to, you know, because they, they kind of don't care where the smoke goes. And, uh, yeah, and there's some, like hot topic, hot button issues with this movie. Uh, I think the, and the only ones that really work are, you know, the the whole, you know, Martha, Martha thing, where, you know, a elderly person gives all of his worldly possessions to his caretaker. And then uh, uh, Jody's, whole issue with uh, with Christopher Plummer's character where he is going to cut off all of um, Meg's Meg is played by the girl from uh, 13 Reasons Why but that whole scene where uh, Meg is all like don't really or that whole scene where uh, it's discovered that uh, instead of actually using the money the tuition money to actually do tuition she like has she kind of doubles the tuition money but keeps some of her keeps some of herself and you know she's and it sort of reveals that she's like a lying cheat that's kind of um you know that's sort of nice so like those two i think really work and yeah um so i like this movie okay I feel like I've already ended it like maybe three times, but yeah. So there you go. Remember, uh, a lot of people are going to disagree with me on this. But yeah, so there you go. Uh, remember, got me especially. Loves you very much. I've been Dan, obviously. And uh, yeah. Also, tell me what you thought about uh, me actually doing a teaser. Because that was my first teaser. So yeah, there you go. Remember, be safe and have a nice day. Bye.